and welcome to Valkenswaard in the Netherlands for the opening round of the FIM Women's Motocross World Championship. My name is Paul Malin. You join us live on MX, MX Live TV on what is a lovely sunny day here, but don't be fooled by that blue sky in the background because it is bitterly cold here this weekend. It has been since we arrived on Thursday and there was a, a light ground frost through the night around about minus four degrees. So what would normally be a, a nice sandy circuit is a little bit loose on top, but quite hard underneath. So these MX3, uh, MX women riders are really going to be grappling for traction in this second race. Temperature there just above zero, look, one degree. And the sun pretty low as well this time of the day, but the venue then for this opening round of the 2013 FIM Women's Motocross World Championship. In terms of geography, we're about 140 kilometers from Amsterdam, 120K from Brussels. The town itself, situated in the south of the Netherlands in the province of North Brabant, which covers an area of just under 57 square kilometers and home to around 31,000 people. The Euro circuit here in Valkenswaard has played host to motocross world championships since 1974. The 250 class that weekend was won by Sylvain Gabors on a factory Suzuki. He is now also the team principal for Rockstar Energy Suzuki in World MX1. Chiara Fontanese is the defending champion. She'll be looking for a good points haul this weekend, but Megan Rutledge, the Australian, Natalie Kane, and Steph Elia will be looking to make it very difficult for the defending champion here today. In terms of the weekend so far, the qualifying race was quite an interesting affair for the women because uh, the three main riders who are definitely going to be duking it out for the overall, Megan Rutledge, Natalie Kane, Chiara Fontanese were pretty much wheel to wheel. Here's Amy. Good morning from Valkensob. We hope you had a very lovely Easter Sunday yesterday. We're down on the start line for the second race of the first round of the Women's World Championship. We're going to have a word with defending champion Kiara. Kiara starting off the season in the right way yesterday. Um, what are you hoping to do this year? Yeah, the, that was really important for me to begin the season like yesterday. So I try to keep uh, doing the same and we will see the season is long. So. Now I need to think about this race and this second race. I want to get red played at the beginning. So, yeah, I will fight for it and let's go see what happens. Thanks, Kiara. Well, finishing just behind Kiara was Megan Rutledge. Megan, we saw you put in a similar performance at the last round of um, the last season. Will we be seeing more of you this year? Um, I'd like to come back over, but at this stage I'm not 100% sure. So at the moment it will just be this round. And how are you feeling out there? Oh, uh, yeah, well, it's quite cold, a bit different back to home, but, yeah, I'm really loving it out there. OK, well, all the best for today. Um, let's check out the highlights from the first race yesterday. Well, the qualifying race was a pretty intense affair yesterday. Chiara Fontanese didn't make the best of starts, but Megan Rutledge, who we just heard from there on the file, Kawasaki, the Australian, she grabbed the whole shot and disappeared, or well, she tried to, Natalie Kane on the HM Plant KTM UK machine from Ireland. She kept her honest. Fontanese caught both girls, and for the second half of the race, in the qualifier, this is, they literally went wheel to wheel and bar to bar, and there was literally nothing in it, just less than one and a half seconds separating. In the first race, though, Kira Fontanese made the whole shot. And she was followed by the 66 of Megan Rutledge. Natalie Kane finding a way past Steffi Lyer, the former three-time world champion, on the opening lap to try and pursue Chiara Fontanese and Megan Rutledge, the number 86. Lillianne Milewick from the Netherlands. She found herself going out and she wouldn't score any points. But Natalie Kane, she pushed on and she tried to close down the gap to number 66, Megan Rutledge. And the HM Plant KTM UK rider went after the Australian. 
but Chiara Fontanese, she was doing her best to stay up front and she came home a winner in moto number one. 16 seconds clear of Megan Rutledge. Natalie Kane was third with Steffi Lai fourth and Larissa Pampermeyer was fifth. Nancy van der Ven was sixth. Then we had Nikki Van Woodragen, Jessica Moore, another Australian on a KTM. She was eighth. Britt van der Vecken was ninth. And Marielle de Mol, she came home in tenth. Marion Veenstrep started 22nd, the Dutch rider. And she eventually came through after a bit of an up and down race, actually. She got up to 18th, lost a couple positions again. And then eventually found her way back to 16th. So she will be looking for something better here in moto number two you'll see the amazing backdrop that we've got this weekend the blinds are down though the riders have already had their sighting lap so as we look at Ann Borchers HK Motorsports racing Suzuki VIP across the top the new podium area in the middle that's going to be present at all of the European rounds of this FIM World Motocross Championship in MX1 MX2 obviously this weekend we have the women and MX3 joining us they will do that for three times this year the opening round here in Valkenswad as we look at Chiara Fontanese then we will go to Maggiore in Italy one of the most famous circuits in the world and of course the festival the motocross festival at Matley Basin in August but for MX1 MX2 yeah the the skybox as it's called the backdrop the VIP the podium area and the waiting zone will actually be inside those boxes. We'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later. But Megan Rutledge, what a girl she is. What a star of the future, definitely. Young Australian. She uh, was on fire when she came over here last year. Only did the, first round in, uh, the last round in Germany, but she was leading Livia Lancelot in a first race and going away and eventually picked up second place. Didn't make a good start in the second one and crashed again and then was fourth. So, but it got her on a podium and uh, she's in a good place now. That's how the qualifying race finished yesterday. That's how the girls will line up in the race as they do right now. And we're back at Valkenswaard and we're running in the original direction to what you've seen over the past few years. But the original first turn doesn't get used until the riders come round to complete the lap. So the actual, you see the turn at the bottom of your screen there, it's a little bit shorter, but it's still a chicane that then sends them past the work area. Down by pit lane on the opening lap. Pretty tight through there as well. Ingo Parch, our race director, down there with the, the green flag, getting ready to get the girls under starters' orders. As you can see, we've got one or two riders yet to come in. Minus four it was in the night. When I arrived this morning at about 10 to 8, there was a, a slight crust on the top, and riders were already out on the track. But I expect we're going to have a good crowd here. Since we've been here at Easter weekend, this last couple of years, three years or so, always had a good crowd. We had rain last year, sun two years ago. We've got sun today, but it is bitterly cold. 15 second board. Our track guy, Justin Barkley, holding up the 15 second board. Stick him in a blonde wig, he'd look, uh, well, no different really. A blonde with a beard. And Greg Atkins, so our track crew's down there. Gate about to drop. Race two, women here at Valkens Ward. And it is Natalie Kane and, Kia and uh, Steffi Lyer. Or is it? No, it's the 198 of Jessica Moore with a good start. So the Australian Jessica Moore, who was eighth in race one, as we look at our drone cam high above the Balkans Wild, the Euro circuit. But look at that. Kane now in second. Rutledge now third. Moore losing out. Looks like Papermeyer has gone through in a fifth place as well. Where is our defending champion and winner from race one, Chiara Fontanese? Natalie Kane now leads. So Natalie Kane, HM Plant KTM UK, has found herself leading here in the early stages of race two. Steffi Lyon, number 110, a three time champion. Ahead of 66, Megan Rutledge, who likes to go down the inside and finds a way through. Of the file Kawasaki teammate. 
Up onto the crest. 44. Natalie Kane leads. Steffi Lyons found her way back into second. Whoa, and takes the Australian wide. Rutledge there, 66. Having to take evasive action, but she has the right line going down into the sweeping loop. Playing into the hands of Natalie Kane at the moment. These two tripping each other up. But Rutledge there now into second position, number 66. 110, Steffi Lyre in third. And in fourth place, just waiting for them to come over the Monster Energy Jump in the background. It's still more, I think, Jessica Moore than 198. Then Chiara Fontanese in fifth. Then it's Larissa Papamai Picotto down in sixth place. So the little... Oh, and uh, Lyre goes down, loses the back end coming out of the turn. So Steffi Lyre was fighting hard with Megan Rutledge. 27 there in the background. That's Marielle de Mol of the Netherlands trying to find a way past the former champ, who, like last year, won't be contesting the whole of the series. But Rutledge now, she has nobody to bother her from behind except Chiara Fontanese's found her way up in the third position again. So this looks like it's going to be a repeat of what we had in the qualifying race. Yesterday afternoon, the rider saying the circuit here a lot harder than usual. There you see the start straight coming up into the opposite direction where the girls are running now and then through the chicane past pit lane. But Natalie Kane, she knows she's got to get her head down here. She was third in moto number one. She's leading here in moto number two. She's fit, she's healthy, she's raring to go. Megan Rutledge, three and a half seconds down as she came over the line. There she is, and the Monster Energy Yamaha of Chiara Fontanese, just a couple seconds further back. The old step up through the, the left-hander. Natalie Kane, Megan Rutledge, maybe jumping a little bit off track, I think, there. Saw a couple of MX2 guys do that. That's why. That's why she's uh, lost a little bit of time. Three and a half seconds. That was a big moment for Megan Rutledge. So Megan Rutledge then. Lucky to get away with that. I guess the question is, how much time did Chiara Fontanese close in? That's a great view of the start going down. Oh, 295. Getting it wrong there. That was Ebba Bergstrom of Sweden. Just turning in the front, tucking in. 4-2-3, Larissa Papamai, Picotto, 66 at the inside of it. Megan Rutledge, the 68, getting a good start as well. Nina Klink. As the riders file through, turn two, and then the straight over the camelback and out into the woodland part of the circuit. Natalie Kane, though. Working her way back towards the finish line area. And number eight, the danger woman in the background, closing in on the 66, Megan Rutledge here. So the young Australian over the step down that was the finish jump last year. Of course, it was a step up last year. That's the moment. Well, that's the area on a track a lap ago where she had that moment. But it's Kane, Rutledge, Fontanese, Jessica Moore at the moment. We're waiting for her. There she is, the 198. Then it's Papamaya Picotto. In fifth, Nina Klink is six and Borch is seven. Britt van der Vecken eight. Nina Verdragen is not uh, 141, sorry. Of, uh, Nikki van der Dragen is in ninth. And Steffi Lyre, she's in tenth after that first lap mishap. Marielle Dumal is 11th. Justine Charou is 12th. Gabriela Sazdeiros is 13th. Brenda Vargmans is 14th. Sophia Paul, she had a big crash on the start yesterday. She's now in 15th place. Amy Goodlad, 16th. So two Brits there. 17th is the number 98 of Selena Schittelhelm. Then we've got uh, 67, Britt van der Werf. Oh, Sophia Paul's dropping down the order, so she's been off. She's down in 19th, so uh, Sophia Paul losing a few positions on that lap. Back with the action, though, for second position. The girl in white, Monster Energy Yamaha, Fonter MX, racing Chiara Fontanese. Drops down the hill through the right-hander. Megan Rutledge making a couple of mistakes. Didn't see too many from her yesterday. Fontanese, she's got her head down. She's getting ready to go for it here. She was a double race winner at this race last year, but of course in the opposite direction, in slightly wetter conditions, was Kiara Fontanese. Picked up the red plate as well, so she only had one thing on her mind last year, and we heard her with 
Amy Dargan down on the pre-grid at the start of the race say that she wants to come away from here with the red plate as well. She's on the left-hand side, Chiara Fontanese, number eight. She's finding a way past the 66 of Megan Rutledge. She will know that the Italian is there who looks to square off but got nowhere to go. So we've got Megan Rutledge about 2.7 seconds down on our race leader, Natalie Kane, on the HM Plant KTM UK machine. Natalie Kane, who finished second last year, 34 points behind Fontanese in the end, did actually take a race win in Slovenia and a second there, of course, and then a whole bunch of second place finishes towards the second half of the season did Natalie Kane. In fact, the only time she finished outside the top four was an eighth in the second moto here last year. Over the Dragon's back. Then the Monster Energy finish line jump. 66. Megan Rutledge from Australia. Temperatures a little bit hotter out there. She's only been out here since Monday. Spoke to her on uh, Saturday morning before she went out for practice. Said, how are you finding the cold weather? She was there with her father. She said, um, yeah, you know, it's a little bit cold. We had a, an SMS and a picture of my mum on the beach uh, yesterday. So uh, that didn't go down too well, mum, if you're listening. But she's doing a great job here, holding off the defending champion, number eight, Chiara Fontanese, on that blue Yamaha. Through the wave section they go. Very cold under the trees there. A little bit warmer as they pop out into the sunlight now, but the ground hard, it's slick. The bumps not rounded off like, like waves like we would normally get in a sand race. Very hard and choppy. Fontanese running a bit wide there, losing a leg as she came out. Then look at that, the back end. That's what I mean. The ground is hard, it's slick. Still has an element of frost just behind the, uh, just beneath the surface. But Fontanese continuing to go after and pursue the 66. Megan Rutledge here on that green Kawasaki. She's in second position on that file Kawasaki. Here's a race leader though, 44, Natalie Kane. Fontanese looks to go up the inside this time. Remember, Alapa go, tried to go round the outside of Rutledge, but not even getting close to get alongside. The Australian that time around, Chiara Fontanese. Whoa, look at those square edge bumps down there. Oh, and a pitch there. Gets pushed wide, does Rutledge, but just managed to get on the gas and hold off Chiara Fontanese. Fontanese trying everything on that number eight. Blue Yamaha in the background to find a way into second position here. Easy on the gas through that right, through the left, over the step down. So, Kane about to come through. We'll see a pop up over the finish line jump there in the background. A 217.5 for her. She had the fastest first sector that time around. Her own personal best, the 43.512. But 217 last lap for Natalie Kane. 218.1 for uh, Rutledge and Fontanese. They're now 3.9 and 4.4 seconds behind our race leader, Natalie Kane. So, This little battle certainly helping Natalie Kane because these girls riding a little bit of defensive race. Rutledge having to work hard to stop Chiara Fontanese trying to find a way through. Fontanese though up on the pegs, gets good drive, a mistake again from Rutledge coming out of that left hander. She's going to have to go tight and defensive. She's got the radar on underneath that helmet, doing everything right. Pretty much riding in the middle of the circuit, making it difficult for Fontanese to find a way through, who charges hard down a hill over those massive braking bumps into that right hander at the bottom and then sweeping through. Massive holes through there as well as they work their way up and over the jump onto the plateau. Only the faces of the jumps got fixed at the end of the races yesterday. So still a very physical circuit for these girls to get a hold of. Great battle though this between the Australian number 66 Megan Rutledge and the number eight of Chiara Fontanese. Are they closing in on Natalie Kane though? That's the question. It was 3.93 seconds. So I think they've had a good lap this time around. These two. There's Natalie Kane in the distance. Our race leader. 
A tight line this time for Rutledge, so she did get pitch offline yesterday. Similar to Jeffrey Hurlings in his qualifying race, we do have footage of that that we uh, hope to show at the start of the next two as well. Ooh, oh, somebody getting it wrong off the jump. Handful of gas, oh, going down big time. Couldn't quite see who that was. Let's zoom in on the number. Front end was a little bit too high. I think it's a 29, Kim Ermgart. 21, sorry. Front end was a bit too high, and obviously uh, you want to be getting the front wheel down on the downside there, but looks like that area's been cleared now. Back marker starting to come into play. Number 29, Carla magalon Gubau of, of uh, Spain on the Honda. Doing her best to keep out of the way of this battle between 66, our second place rider, Megan Rutledge on the file, Kawasaki, and the Monster Energy Yamaha of Chiara Fontaneta. Mum was a nervous wreck watching on pit lane yesterday. And that was in the qualifying race. Closed right up. It was 2.1 as they came over the line, but there's your race leader. There's second and third. So with eight minutes plus two laps to go, the battle for the lead now is the one that we're looking at, not just for a second. We did mention a moment ago that it looked like Rutledge was closing in and taking Con Chiara Fontanese with her. Suddenly, Rutledge has a sniff of the lead and she's leaving behind the defending champion, number eight, Chiara Fontanese. So, Natalie Kane, 44, HM3KTF UK, really now gonna face a bit of a test in the second half of this race. 20 minutes plus two laps this race. We've got 7.25 on the clock. When that ticks down, the two-lap board will go out. Remember, 25 points for a win, 22 for second, 20 for third, 18, 16, 15, and then single digits right the way down. Is she feeling the pace a little bit? We don't know. 220, so 20 point scorers. The gap is right there, one, two, and three. Kiara Fontanese just looking like she's regrouping there in the background. No, she's got a little bit of time on her hands, but with the races that she had yesterday, certainly in qualifying, and there you see the differences. Kane taking long, wide, sweeping lines. Rutledge taking bike lengths off of her as she goes for the inside. So she's done the hard work. Has 66, Megan Rutledge. Close right up on the rear wheel of Natalie Kane, 44. This is the battle for the lead. Kiara Fontanese not in it at the moment, but she's not far off. She's there in the background on the Monster Energy Yamaha, number eight, in the white clothing. But uh, there's a challenge here, and Rutledge has gone through. So Rutledge now, having completed five laps, is the new race leader. And she leads, not for the first time in an FIM Women's Motocross World Championship race, but it is the first time she's led in 2013. Might only be the only round that she does as well, but 188, one of the back markers getting out of the way there. Or was it uh, 168, I think that was actually. Nina Kass of Germany. And Fontanese, number eight, closing in on Natalie Kane. Through the waves, back markers, 66, Rutledge, 44 in second, Natalie Kane, number eight, all over the back of her, taking a sweep round the outside. Chiara Fontanese up on the top. I think she's found her way through. Kane, though, she's going to force the Italian wide. Oh, there's a bit of bar banging action going on. Kane takes Fontanese wide over the berm, defending that second place position. Doesn't want to get caught behind the back markers. Good use of the slow riders there for Kane at the bottom of the hill. Maybe a crucial moment in the race for her in terms of at least keeping hold of that second place because look at the time that Fontanese has lost there. Kane in the yellow helmet knows the defending champion is around the outside. They lock bars. Fontanese goes over the top, gets a face full of roost as well. And this is the pass for the lead. Rutledge turns tight, squares off, gets good drive, smooth line. Natalie Kane, a few bumps there in the middle part of the circuit, and it was easy in the end for the 66, Megan Rutledge, as she found a way to become the new race leader. Just at the end of lap five. So Rutledge, she came over the line last time, was only half a second clear of Natalie Kane. Kane now going after 66 Rutledge. Fontanese still down there in third place.
Off the step down she goes. Defending champion, current points leader, based on her victory in moto number one yesterday. Going after Natalie Kane, 44, to at least get herself into second place. One or two little back markers. The leaders have to be aware of. Kane going for the inside line. There's 23, Sophia Paul. Sophia Paul outside the top 20 right now. Doing her best just to hold a tight line. Here's number eight, Chiara Fontanese. Once again, having to regroup, dig deep to find a way back onto the rear end of that orange cat. Oh, she couldn't get over the top there. Number 44, Natalie Kane. I don't think Chiara Fontanese could either. She'd seen that Kane hadn't got over it. So maybe she had to pull out the last minute as well, but right on the rear wheel again of Natalie Kane is number eight. Megan Rutledge is way here at the moment. It was one and a half seconds as she came over the line. Looks more than that now, though, as, they, as the second and third place riders crest the top of the hill. Still having to deal with uh, one or two back markers there. I think that was 143, Stephanie Stuesteig uh, on the Wilbur and Start Jam Racing KTM. Here's Rutledge, our race leader. And uh, Fontanese alongside. I was waiting to see when they popped up over the hill, uh, over the jump there, if they were side by side. But uh, this time, Fontanese goes through, makes no mistake about it. And she now fires her Monster Energy Yamaha into second position. Going after Megan Rutledge. Wants two wins like she did last year. Number eight, Chiara Fontanese. Rutledge, the Australian there. Number 66 on the final race in Kawasaki, the German-based Kawasaki squad. Over the uh, dragon back. Then the Monster Energy finish line jump. This one's going to be a shootout. Three laps to go. Between Megan Rutledge, 66 from Australia, and number eight, Chiara Fontanese, the defending champion. Number eight from Italy. Natalie Kane now in third place, almost four seconds down on our race leader. She's given her all here. Stays like this. Megan Rutledge will take the overall. It'll be a share of the points with Chiara Fontanese. Moto number one was Fontanese from Rutledge and Natalie Kane. So Kane would have, at this stage, two third place finishes. Two lots of 20 points. Puts her on 40. Chiara Fontanese, the winner from race one yesterday, currently there, number eight, in second position at the moment. That'll give her 47. The same points as Megan Rutledge, a second and a potential first place finish here in his second race. Well, she said at the start of the day that not sure how many rounds she'll do, we'll just see how it goes. Well, wouldn't be surprised if somebody makes it worth her while. If she walks away from here with a red plate, we might see her in Italy in two weeks' time. There's Steffi Lai, she's down in fifth place. So uh, time almost up on the clock. The two-lap board will go out next time around. Megan Rutledge, Chiara Fontanese, and Natalie Kane. They're the three riders we've been paying close attention to. But Jessica Moore, another Australian, she's in fourth place, riding number 98. Then it's the girl here, Steffi Lyatt, former three-time world champion. She's in fifth place. Larissa Papamaya, Pakoto there, 4-2-3, coming in the background on that Suzuki. She's in sixth, former Grand Prix winner herself. In fact, in terms of Grand Prix winners, we've only ever had four. Oh, was that Jessica Moore at the bottom of the hill? I think that might have been Jessica Moore. And if it is, then she's gone out of fourth place. The Australian, this angle will tell us more. Yes, it will. It was Jessica Moore losing her front end at the bottom of the hill there. So Steffi Lyatt moves into fourth place.
Larissa Pampamaya for Koto here, 4 2 3. She finds herself now in fifth. Rit van der Becken, before uh, we lost uh, Jessica Moore, she found herself in seventh. Nina Klink was eighth, and Waters was ninth. And uh, Nikki van der Dragen, the 141, was down in tenth place. Here is Steffi Light. So the two lap board has gone out. Our leaders are over the line. 0.6 of a second between Rutledge and Fontanese. So that one really going right the way down to the chequered flag between Megan Rutledge and Chiara Fontanese. There is that Papamaya Fukoto, a two time Grand Prix winner. Steffi Light, though, the girl she's following, number 110 on that green Kawasaki. Three-time world champion has the most Grand Prix victories since the uh, the women's series got FIM World Championship status back in 2008. She has 16 Grand Prix wins. Does uh, Steffi Lyer? Think Megan Rutledge might have found a way past the back markers here, leaving Chiara Fontanese to deal with them, or has she? Has she made a mistake? No, she's here at the bottom end of the screen. I think. So a big gap opening up between uh, Megan Rutledge, potentially. In fact, I think we have a new race leader. Either that or Chiara Fontanese's fallen. So Fontanese, we're looking for Megan Rutledge. Rutledge still showing on our timing screen as the race leader. But we've picked up Chiara Fontanese. Megan Rutledge nowhere to be seen at this, pro uh, this moment. We'll soon find out when the one lap board goes out. No Megan Rutledge. So Chiara Fontanese then is our race leader. And the one lap board is about to go out. So not sure what happened to Megan Rutledge. Cameras haven't picked it up. Natalie Kane, is she going to be in second then? <laughs> Rutledge goes through 13 seconds down, so, uh, and she's uh, only uh, eight tenths of a sec uh, eight tenths quicker or ahead of Natalie Kane, who's now in third place, where she's been for a few laps, but maybe an opportunity missed there for Natalie Kane. Not sure if the cold conditions forcing a little bit of arm pump, but certainly a long look over the shoulder for Chiara Fontanese. She's going to be our overall winner. As it stands at the moment. And Fontanese doing what she uh, did previously a year ago, almost to the week actually, Easter weekend. The date of next week was uh, when we rode here around the 8th, 8th and 9th of uh, April last year. But Fontanese picking her lines carefully. She would have seen. The mistake, maybe she was part of the reason that Megan Rutledge fell. Who knows? We didn't see it on camera, but certainly Fontanese now knows she can afford herself a little bit of breathing space as she makes her way the final half lap around this tough Falcons Wild circuit. Works its way around the Euro circuit, which is a rallycross uh, venue. Part tarmac and part dirt. Ooh. Bit offline there, she landed, Chiara Fontanese, but managing just to keep it up on two wheels. Background though, Natalie Kane and Megan Rutledge. Has Kane found a way through? No, she's all over the back of the Australian. Number 66 and number 44 fighting for second position. This would determine second overall now. Natalie Kane going after the Australian. Is she going to go wide or tight? Well, the back marker goes to the inside. Both the riders have to go around the berm. So Rutledge. Going defensive again through the inside here. Oh, a bit of a mistake coming out the turn. Final turn though for Chiara Fontanese. Hits the Dragons back. No celebrations there, but she will take the Monster Energy finish line and she's the winner here, round one. And wins the overall Grand Prix victory. Does uh, Chiara Fontanese, not even sure if she's seen the chequered flag, but uh, Rutledge holds on for second. Kane holds on for third. Your overall podium is going to be Fontanese. Rutledge and Kane. Fontanese still thinks there's a race to be won here, look. Off for another lap. 
Not the first time we've seen that happen uh, in races over the years, but uh, I'm sure someone will point that out. But uh, Chiara Fontanese then, she was the uh, winner and our overall Grand Prix winner as well, Natalie Kane, having to just settle for third. It'd be the same points as Rutledge, so great ride for the Australian, great ride for Natalie Kane as well. But uh, this girl, number eight, Chiara Fontanese, a bit short on the step up. Getting off uh, to the perfect start in terms of that title defense. Steffi Lyre over the line in fourth. Pampermeyer coming home in fifth place. Waiting for Jessica. Wait for Jessica Moore. So Jessica Moore does come over the line in six. She was holding fourth place, actually. Wait for uh, Britt van der Vecken to come through. And she does now. Just ahead of uh, the 68, Nina Klink. Then we've got uh, number 85, Nancy van der Ven. As we continue to watch final lap plus one for number eight, Chiara Fontanese. Ten and Borchers. Maybe now she'll uh, pull a one-hander to celebrate her race win. There we go. <laughs> Felt so good, she did it twice. So Chiara Fontanese then makes her way back down to the winner's circle. We'll see her on the podium, the new podium, of course, in just a few moments' time, being ushered into the, the winner's circle behind the waiting zone. the cheers and celebrations behind with the uh, Monster Energy Yamaha squad. Mum, Dad and, the, uh, and a brother. There's an extra rider actually. So, uh, coming up with the classifications. Here we go. Chiara Fontanese, the winner here in moto number two. From Megan Rutledge, Natalie Kane was third, Steffi Lyre was fourth, Larissa Pampermeyer Picotto was fifth, Jessica Moore, the Australian, was sixth, Britt van der Vecken, Nina Klink, Nancy van der Ven, and Anne Borchers, your top ten. Nikki van der Dragen, Brenda Vargemans, Justine Charu, Marielle de Mol, Gabriella Zeisdodos, uh, Kimberly Brahm, Joanna Miller, the 67 of uh, van der Werf, Marianne Vinstra. And Amy Goodlad with a point in 20th place. Yeah, that means that we're going to have to look for the huldiging of the top three of the dames class here on the Euro Motocross Week in Valkenswaard. They have just made a good point for the World Championship 2013. And they will be able to give the top three of the world monster energy podium to the world. So as we watch the machines out on the start line area, prepping that first turn and the final corner for our MX3 riders, they'll be getting ready for their first race. Of course, that goes in about half an hour. We're getting ready to go down to the podium area to see our winners from the Women's Motocross World Championship. Great looking podium, up high, elevated. And I'm sure that uh, when we go to the next race, that's the final MX1 race, the girls will, uh, or the riders, will have a good crowd looking up to that area. So there are your winners then, first, second and third. Third on the right-hand side, the HM Plant KTM UK rider, Natalie Kane. Two third-place finishes, but uh, was so close to taking her first race win of the season.
here today. Megan Rutledge, the Australian, presented by uh, Nude Van Arm. There, the file Kawasaki rider in the Fox clothing with the, uh, the red Bridgestone hat. And then, of course, uh, our winner, Chiara Fontanese. In the middle, Monster Energy Yamaha rider doing what she did a year ago. A double race winner and the overall Grand Prix victor here at Valkenswaard for the Grand Prix of the Netherlands. Her dad to the right, picking up the Manufacturer's Award for Yamaha, but uh, the red plate, Dr. Wolfgang Schrub, the director of the FIM CAMS, hands Chiara Fontanese the red plate. She means business. She's started the season in 2013, and she left it in 2012. National Anthem for Italy, for Chiara Fontanese. Winning manufacturer this weekend for the women, Yamaha. Normally we get uh, national anthem for uh, Japan. But looking like uh, not happening here for the women's world championship, but uh, yeah, Fontanese. Sure, that is ice cold champagne as well. Natalie Kane saying, you know what, have a little bit more. These girls, they were fighting all weekend long. They're fighting on a podium, but this time it's all in the, in the name of fun. <laughs> Chiara Fontanese, Megan Rutledge and Natalie Kane. First, second and third here at the Grand Prix in the Netherlands in Valkenswaard. First round of the Women's Motocross World Championship. And here's how it happened. The gate dropped and it was a good start for Steffi Lyer. Jessica Moore, though, with a hole shot. Natalie Kane tucked in there in third position, but before the end of the lap, Natalie Kane was leading, and Megan Rutledge, a couple laps later, found her way through past the Ulster girl on the HM Plan KTM. Far Kawasaki rider was our new leader. Kiara Fontanese got into the wheels of both those girls, and uh, that was the battle that we kept our eyes on. Rutledge, though, decided that she wanted to clear off at the head of the field, and at the second time of asking, Number eight, Chiara Fontanese found her way in a second position pass to the 44 of Natalie Kane. And off camera, we didn't see the action that uh, lost Megan Rutledge the lead. Chiara Fontanese, though, finding her way through. And on the start of the last lap was 13 seconds clear. She did come home to take the checkered flag for a first time, but continued to race through. Second time around, though, she came over the line. And then there was a celebration, knowing that two wins out of two. 50 points, she's the winner. Here she is with Amy. Congratulations, first race win of the year, but it really came down to the wire. What happened? How did you manage to take that race lead just before the final lap? Yeah, the reason is that I take a bad start, and as always, uh, it's difficult to pass here in this track, and yeah, I couldn't take my, my good rhythm, so yeah, I had so much mistake, but in the end, I saw that I, I could pass, but we had a little block pass with the uh, Natalie and then I lose so much time but in the end I came back uh, and I passed her and yeah when I saw that I could battle for uh, I could yeah could take the battle for the for the first place then uh, I say I need to do this and I try my best and yeah she she maybe she felt the, the pressures and she had a mistake so I had the chance to pass her but yeah in the end after I was uh, I had a good rhythm and yeah, I'm really, really happy about the GP win and the red plate. Congratulations. Thank you. Chiara Fontanese then, as always, she said, her words, not mine, making a bad start, making it difficult for herself. But provided some great racing and a little bit of fireworks along the way. 
eventually came through to take the win from Megan Rutledge and Natalie Kane. It's become a double winner here in Valkenswaard. Megan Rutledge on the file Kawasaki, the Australian rider in only a second ever World Championship event. She took two hard-earned second place finishes, second overall, and she is down by the podium with Amy. Megan, great performance from you today. Obviously, a little bit disappointed you couldn't hold on to that race lead, but are you happy with how the weekend's gone overall? Yeah, I had a really good weekend overall, but yeah, as you said, I am pretty disappointed with that last race. Uh, would have liked to have walked away with the red plate, considering this may be the only round I do, but hopefully I can come back now and back it up and go for the red plate. Well, we'll hope to see you back. Thank you. Hmm, interesting words there from Megan Rutledge. In terms of maybe coming back, will we see her as early as Italy? Or will it be much later on in the season? But uh, obviously, had a taste of it here once again. Push and tar was a hard pack track. This was slightly less hard, a little bit sandy, but very physical. But um, who knows, we could see her in the World Championship for a full campaign. If not this year, maybe next year. Natalie Kane on the HM Plan KTM. She was third, here she is with Amy. Natalie, you took the whole shot in that second race, finishing on the podium for the first round of the championship. How do you feel it's gone this weekend? Yeah, I think I had a really good weekend. I got the whole shot and I got a, a small gap and it sort of stayed the same, but then my own spawn removed around and it was blocking me from turning right properly, so I just sort of relaxed and they got past, they got past. But then um, Megan made a small mistake and I caught up on her again and I nearly had her a few times, but it's just she was a bit... She just kept blocking the line and there was no point risking to fall off because I didn't even expect to be top three with the, we didn't get here lo for long and everything, so I was happy with top three. Well done. Thank you. Good weekend for HM Plant KTM UK. Roger McGee, Natalie Kane, of course, came, came so close to winning. The second moto there, but that's uh, she said, just working its way loose and obviously affecting the steering lock through right-handers in particular. So didn't want to take any risks. She's got good points on the board, 40 in total, which means she's uh, about seven down on Chiara Fontanese as we go into Italy in two weeks' time. Not a bad place to start. Certainly better than last year anyway. So Natalie Kane then, third overall this weekend, Megan Rutledge second, but Chiara Fontanese taking her eighth career Grand Prix victory, her second here back to back in Valkenswaard. Chiara Fontanese leaving everybody else in no doubt that she means business, but on today's performance, there's the overall Grand Prix. There could be challenges this year. Rutledge second, Kane third, Liar. And the rest, as you just saw there a moment ago. Yeah, uh, inmiddels kunnen we even vertellen dat de uh, handtekeningen sessie die zal waarschijnlijk al in uh, volle gang zijn. Ja, die is al geweest bij uh, de Hallemax KTN stint. Terwijl wij nu even een Once the girls doing all they can to keep warm. They are cheating a little bit though. There are some heaters up there, so. Uh, Doing their best to keep the crowds entertained up there on the top of the Monster Energy Station. We saw the overall Grand Prix classification, World Championship points, exactly the same with it being the first round here. Chiara Fontanese, our championship leader, our red plate holder, Rutledge Kane, Liar. Uh, Hampermeyer, Picoto, uh, Jessica Moore, uh, Britt van der Vecken, uh, or oh, sorry, uh, uh, Nancy van der Ven and Britt van der Vecken, 7th and 8th, Nikki van der Dragen, Nina Klink, and Porches, Marielle de Mol, Brenda Bargman, Justine Sheru, Joanna Miller, Marianne Veenstra. Van der Werf, Gabriela de Sens, Sais Dados, picking up a couple of points here. Manufacturers, classification, well, can be nobody other than Yamaha, double race winner here in Valkenswaard. Fifty points for them. Kawasaki scoring 
Megan Rutledge in both races and KTM third, Suzuki Honda TM with 18 points this weekend. So uh, looking good for Yamaha. Well, that's it for uh, the Women's Motocross World Championship.